So let's go back to this article by Hank Hanegraaff. Was Revelation written before or after the destruction of the temple in AD 70? Where we find this argument. Consider one of the most amazing prophecies in all of Scripture. Jesus is leaving the temple when his disciples call his attention to its buildings. As they gaze upon its massive stones and magnificent buildings, Jesus utters the unthinkable. I tell you the truth, not one stone here will be left on another. Every one will be thrown down. One generation later, this prophecy, no doubt still emblazoned on the tablet of their consciousness, became a vivid and horrifying reality. As noted by Josephus, the temple was doomed August 30th, AD 70, the very day on which the former temple had been destroyed by the king of Babylon. As incredible as Christ's prophecy and its fulfillment one generation later are, it is equally incredible to suppose that the apostle John would make no mention of it. Let's look at what the early church said about John, how long he lived among believers and ministered to them, and where. Christ still fulfilled the office of a teacher, even as the gospel and all the elders testify. Those who were conversant in Asia with John, the disciple of the Lord, affirming that John conveyed to them that information and he remained among them up to the times of Trajan. That's Irenaeus Against Heresies, Book 2, Chapter 22. And elsewhere, Irenaeus says this, The church in Ephesus, founded by Paul, and having John remaining among them permanently until the times of Trajan, is a true witness of the tradition of the apostles. And that is in Against Heresies, Book 3, Chapter 3. Now, this testimony of Irenaeus is independently verified by Polycrates of Ephesus. And he came from a family of several distinguished men in the church there. And his family knew John. And so what he has to say about John is pretty fascinating. For in Asia also great lights have fallen asleep, which shall rise again on the day of the Lord's coming, when he shall come with glory from heaven, and shall seek out all the saints. Among these are Philip, one of the twelve apostles, who fell asleep in Heropolis, and his two aged virgin daughters, and another daughter, who lived in the Holy Spirit and now rests at Ephesus, and, moreover, John, who was both a witness and a teacher, who reclined upon the bosom of the Lord, and, being a priest, wore the sacerdotal plate. He fell asleep at Ephesus, and Polycarp in Smyrna, who was a bishop and martyr, and Thracius, bishop and martyr from Eumenia, who fell asleep in Smyrna. That's Polycrates of Ephesus, cited by Eusebius in the History of the Ecclesia, Book 5, Chapter 24. Polycrates doesn't mention Trajan, but he verifies the tradition surrounding John's life in Ephesus up until his death. So, John lived up until the times of Trajan, who reigned from 98 to 117 AD. Here is a list of Roman emperors, and I've included Julius Caesar at the top, and historically he is not regarded as a Roman emperor, of course, but prophetically speaking, if you choose to number him among the Roman rulers, well, that's up to you. Here, then, are the times of their reigns. Now, here is John living to the times of Trajan. And here is the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD. Now, do you see the problem here? 
Why did John, living so long after the alleged fulfillment, fail to tell believers the fulfillment had taken place? Remember, there is absolutely no trace of any preterist tradition among the ancient Christians. So how can we explain this? Let me illustrate it for you like this. Preterists think the Apocalypse was written back in this time here, in Nero's time, or prior to his tyranny against the Christians. And some fulfillment allegedly took place then, in Nero and so forth. But then primarily the fulfillments were here at the destruction of Jerusalem. Yet John apparently said nothing of any of this and he lived up to the time of Trajan. You know, there was an attempt a long time ago to suggest that the Apostle John actually was martyred in Jerusalem along with James. And it's a silly idea that's based on um, a spurious quotation attributed to Papias. And uh, it's easily refuted, really. But if the second wave preterists here should try to resurrect this idea, try to use it for their early date theory, then I'll make some videos refuting this too. Are you beginning to see the historical implications of this early date theory? Hank had said this, as incredible as Christ's prophecy and its fulfillment one generation later are, it is equally incredible to suppose that the Apostle John would make no mention of it. Oh, really?